Welcome back. In the second lecture, I introduced uh, a while loop, and we're going to talk a little bit more about while loops. Um, and there's a few more constructs we're going to need uh, as well after that. So this is just a little bit of review, and then we'll start talking a little bit more detail about how while loops work. So let me start by reminding you the nature of a while loop. So the while loop has, of course, the keyword while. Uh, it has some condition, something that must evaluate to a Boolean, true or false a colon, just like a function definition, and then a body. Okay? So the condition is an expression, as I just said, that evaluates to a Boolean value true or false. If it is true, you then evaluate the body of the code, which can be one or more lines of code, and the same way it is indented in the same way that the body of a function is indented. So if that condition evaluates to true, you evaluate the body. You get to the end of the body, and you loop, that's why it's called a while loop, back up, you reevaluate the condition, and then if it's true, you, you evaluate the body again, and you keep doing that over and over and over again until that condition evaluates to false. Okay, so uh, in order to write conditions, we need conditional operators. So let me just review those again. Um, there's the standard operators, you've seen them over and over again. Um, are, is one number less than or equal to another, less than another, is a number greater than? Uh, is a number equal, and don't forget that the equal is now a double equal sign. So that equal sign is an assignment operator, which is why I've been emphasizing using the word assignment. And the double e e equal sign is in a test for equality. It, just like less than or greater than, will return true or false. Are they equal or not? Of course, you have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then you have not equal to, which we often refer to as bang equals. Okay, so these are the various conditional operators that will compare two things and return a Boolean value, true or false. I want to emphasize again and again, because this is a bug that will keep biting you, is that equal does not equal equal equal. Um, this is the assignment operator, and this is the test for equality. And so early on as you're coding, when you see this, say equality and say assignment, and that'll get you in the habit of it. Okay? So this is an assignment operator. It assigns the value 5 on the right-hand side to the variable x on the left-hand side of the assignment operator. This is a test for equality. Please print for me whether x is equal to 4 or not. It is not because x is 5, so this evaluates to false, and I print false. If I say print x equals 5, by the way, I realize there should be parentheses around there. Don't worry about that. That's just a little bit of a typo in my slides. Uh, if I say print x is assigned the value 5, Python says, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're asking me to print the result of an assignment operator, and that makes no sense at all. That is not an assignment operator. All right, so, okay. We know what the structure of the while loop is, and we have the conditional operators that will allow us to specify a condition that will return a Boolean variable. Good. So let's think about the nature of a while loop now. Let's write some while loops that do some interesting things, or somewhat interesting things. So in one of the previous examples, I had you rotating a uh, square around a circle. And the way we did that is we fed into a function uh, an angle, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I've abbreviated that here with just the word, the function called rotate. I don't want all that baggage of the draw SVG animation. So imagine you've got some function called rotate. It takes a parameter, an angle, and it's going to rotate by that amount. And if I want to rotate in steps of 10, I can just keep calling that function over and over again. Rotate 0, rotate 10, rotate 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, up to 360. And if I want to go to 720, I'm going to have a lot of lines of code, and that gets a little absurd at some point. And so looping constructs, of course, allow you to uh, basically evaluate more or less the same line of code with just a slightly different variable uh, being passed in. So conceptually, here's a way you can think about how these loops are being constructed. So imagine this code right here that I've written. Let me rewrite it in a slightly different way. Let me start by initializing a variable t to be 0. And let me call rotate t. Can we agree that that is just rotate 0, the same as I did on the previous slide? Okay, good. So that's rotate 0 because t is 0. I'm now going to increment t by 10. So t here on the right-hand side is 0. I'm going to add 10 to it. I'm going to assign that back to t. So this value of t is now 10. And now I call the function rotate with 10. Can we also agree that that's the same as what I did in the previous slide? Rotate 0, rotate 10, increment uh, t by 10, rotate 20, increment t, rotate 30, and so on and so forth. So this bit of code, which by the way seems way worse than the previous code, because now 
In addition to all the individual calls for rotate, I have to add in an increment to my variable. So this doesn't seem like we've gone in, in the direction we want in terms of compact code, but notice something interesting here that after this t equals zero line, these two lines and these two lines and these two lines are all exactly the same. Rotate t, increment t, rotate t, increment t, and I do that over and over again. So now you can see the fact that all of these codes are basically the same. The only thing that's changing is the value of t. It's begging for a loop. So really, the only unique part of the code that you saw that on the previous slide is the initialization, that's obviously outside the loop, and then these two lines of code, rotate t, increment t, rotate t, increment t. So now let's think about that in a looping structure. If I can evaluate this code, and then th this line of code, and then this line of code, and then come back and do this, I'll have rotated by 0 and then 10, increment by 10, rotate by 20, and so on and so forth, which is exactly what we want. So if I can get to the bottom here and come back up, I, I've only have to written two lines of code instead of all of those other lines of code. Good. So let's put it inside of a while loop. Okay. Notice where this t equals 0 is. It's outside the while loop. It will get evaluated once and only once. We come to the while. There's some condition. Let's not worry about the condition right now. I'll come back to that. There's my colon. My code is indented as it should be. And I have those two lines of code. So let's make sure we understand what this looping construct is doing. So some condition will come here. It's going to value to true. I'll come back to the condition in a minute. Let's assume it is true for now. So rotate by what? What is the value of t, please? It is 0. So rotate 0. Good. Go to the next line of code. Increment t by 10. The value of t is now 10. Where do I go after I hit the last line of code in the body of the while loop? I go back up to the head, the condition. I evaluate the condition. Let's just go ahead and assume it's going to value to true. And I go again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate by 10. Good. So now I've rotated by 0 and then 10. Increment t by 10. Now I've got 20. Come back up. So now you can see that this little line of code will do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, as long as you want, increment increments of 10, or frankly, whatever increments you want here. And it's going to stop at some point. So when do we want to stop? Well, if I want to go around the circle once, I should stop when t is after t uh, passes 360. OK, so let's try that. So while t is less than 360, then rotate by t and increment t by 1. So let's see, when t is equal to 0, that is certainly going to, that, first of all, this is a Boolean expression. I'm comparing two things using a conditional operator and a value to true. When t is 0, it will pass. When t is 10, it will pass. 20, pass, and so on and so forth. So eventually, I will get to 360. I've gone full circle. Is 360 less than 360? No, it's equal to, and it will boot out. And so that means I went from 0 all the way around to 350. And if I wanted to go exactly to 360 one more time, I could have just written t is less than or equal to 360, and then it would have drawn that last one. Okay? So be careful with those edge cases. You always have to be careful if you're off by 1. What if I wanted to just keep going around the circle over and over and over again and never stop? Now, that's not a really great idea, but maybe there's some user interface that allows you to stop it. And let's say I just wanted to keep rotating. Right? Spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning until my computer runs out of battery. Well, what if my conditional looked like this? While 5 is less than 6. I've just picked those random. First of all, is that expression a value to a Boolean? Sure it does. It's a conditional operator. And is 5 less than 6? Sure it is. And every time I go into the body of the loop and I come back out, what will that evaluate to? It's going to evaluate to true. The, the nature of 5 and 6 doesn't change because I'm rotating and incrementing t. And so this will loop over and over and over and over again, and it will never stop. It's, just, it's an infinite loop, as we call it. Now, that looks a little weird. So let's say I wanted an infinite loop, and you can question if that was a good idea or not. You could have put anything in here that evaluates to true, but it's weird. If I looked at this code, I, I would want to ask myself, why are they comparing 5 to 6? That seems like a very odd thing to do. So if you want to keep looping um, without ever stopping, you can just say while true. So remember that what is in here must evaluate to a Boolean. But if it's already a Boolean, you're fine. So if I say while false, it'll never go in. That's sort of a useless statement. While true means it will keep going over and over and over again because that is always going to be the Boolean variable true. 
Now, it may seem really strange to create an infinite loop. Like, why would you want to do that? So the typical thing in a loop is you have a condition here that eventually evaluates to true based on something that's happening in the body. Okay? That's usually the way it works. So counting down, rotating around something, moving in some direction, you know when you want to stop. Okay, I haven't covered conditionals yet, so let's not worry about this line. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But let me say that there is a way of breaking out of a while loop using the command break. So again, we haven't covered this, so don't worry about what this is yet, but you can sort of get the idea that it checks to see if C is equal to 7, and if it is, then what we do is we break. And what break says is that I can exit a while loop uh, without having to evaluate what's here. So when I hit the break statement, I exit the body at this point. I stop executing, and I come back to the next line of code right here. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's do a simple exercise. Let's, and this, if you want to do this as a drill, that's good. Go ahead and stop, uh, pause the video, and write a little bit of Python code that counts to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So I could write print 1, print 2, print 3, print 4, up to print 10. Or I can write t is equal to 1, print t. t equals t plus 1, print t. t equals t plus 1, print t, and so on and so forth. And so once you see that, once you see that all I'm doing is printing something and then incrementing something, there's only two lines of code there that are unique, and so I'm just going to do that over and over again until a conditional holds. All right, so I'm going to initialize a variable to be n equals to 1. I may have some condition here. Let's come back to that in a little bit. And I know I need to print that value. And once I'm done printing n, the, the first variable, uh, the variable which is equal to 1, what do I want to do? Well, I know I'm going to eventually come back to this line. I want to print the next value, so I want to increment. I want to increment n by 1, so I say n equals n plus 1. So look at these, these two lines of code. N is equal, don't worry about the conditional for now. Print 1, increment n by 1, 2, print 2, increment n by 1, 3, print 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we're done. Now, when you go to write these conditionals, you always have to be really careful at the boundary. There's a classic error that computer scientists always make, which is the off by one. You stop one too early, one too late. You start one too early or one too late. So be really careful at the edges. Okay, so what do you want that stopping condition to be? There's two of them that you can do. Uh, you can say, while n is less than or equal to 10, do this. Why does that work? Because when n is 10, which I want to print, it will enter the loop because n is in fact less than or equal to 10. And I will print 10. I will increment by 1, which gives me 11. 11 comes up, and that is no longer a Boolean expression that evaluates to true, and so I'm done evaluating. So I get 1 to 10. I could have also written while n is less than 11 because 10 is less than 11, so I do this. But 11 is not less than 11. It is less than or equal to 11, and so I execute. I don't like this as much. I find this a little personally confusing. I prefer the less than or equal to. I find it more intuitive. I can see the number right there. I don't have to subtract one. But both of those will work. But be very careful. So in looping constructs, go slowly in the beginning to make sure you got your initial conditions right. You can zip through the middle. And then at the very end, go slowly again to make sure you're getting that last one. All right, that's it for now. We'll pick it up in a little bit.